Well, that was an amazing conversation between Inky Johnson and Jesse Etzler. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty sure every single thing that I wrote down is like a PowerPoint post. Like you can just post one of these statements with like a power post photo and it, it's pretty much your your Monday motivation post for the week. And there's so much good in here. Uh, we'll go ahead and throw it down to Chad to start us off this morning. Good morning, everybody. Um, I love this. It's just practical. It's tangible. It's like shotgun style. And so a few things that, that I had here, and, and he said a lot of universal truths that I think, uh, you know, when I'm always very hesitant when someone uses words like all, always, but when I, I have to say, I agreed with, with everything that he had to say. So he said, uh, we all feel overwhelmed at times, which is kind of encouraging because when we feel overwhelmed, we know that that's just common. It's, it's something that everyone deals with. Uh, we all want to feel accomplished. We feel better and we have a good day when we're at the end of the day, we look back and say, what did I accomplish today? We either get, we either feel defeated because we didn't accomplish what we feel like we should have, or we feel good about ourselves. So producing is something that makes humans feel good. Uh, I like how he said, get small wins, get the early morning victory. You know, it's something as simple as making your bed. There's a book called make your bed. People who make their bed are more successful than people who don't make their bed because you you get that win and then you go, what's next? What's next? Uh, there's there's actually a book out there called Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. And I love that book because what basically what he talks about is do the one thing earlier in the day that you really don't want to do because after you get it done, the rest is gravy because you just knocked it out right away. So get up, make your bed, eat that frog. Don't literally eat a frog, but I mean, unless you're into that frog leg type stuff, but make your bed do that one thing that you really don't feel like doing. And then boom, once you get it done, you're like, yeah, it's kind of like going to the gym. A lot of times it's like, we don't want to go to the gym. You think about the pain and the sweat and all of that. But almost always when you get done working out, you're like, I'm so glad I came. I'm so glad I did it. And some of those days where you don't want to go the most are some of the very best workouts. It's the same with that concept of eating that frog, not negotiating your goals. I mean, once you establish a goal, you just want to be a person who is a goal getter. Who, who's going to go after it and not negotiate your goals, not water them down, not be part of the 80% that New Year's resolutions are done within a month, right? So just be careful of what you're committing to. The commitment is doing what you said you would do long after the feeling you set it in has left you. So once you're committed to something, just be committed and, and do it. Um, otherwise, because if, you, if you're committed to something and you don't do it, it kind of form a bad habit. And it's just like your goals just kind of become real wishy-washy. And you're like, yeah, I feel like I want to accomplish this. And three days later, you're like, oh, I've already quit on 75 other goals. So not a big deal anymore. Um, a few other ones here. I like how you said show up for the challenges, the obstacles, the opportunities. As an entrepreneur, which basically puts you in 10% or less of the population, we actually are signing up. to. We're inviting obstacles. We're inviting challenges champions don't panic. And I love that he addressed that because no one here will tell you being an entrepreneur is easy. The reason why most people don't want to be an entrepreneur is because you can have a, a job and you can show up and, and check out later and, and, you know, leave the job at the job and turn that part of your life off the money making part, turn it back on as an entrepreneur, you are always, I mean, it's, it's a grind and you're always moving. You're always fighting against the obstacles and the challenges to, to gain ground. Um, having gratitude in advance. I love how you touched on family and showing. It's one thing to tell. Our kids don't care what we say. They care what we do. They're ultimately going to do what we do way more than what we say. That's that's the osmosis in the household is, is how kids learn more than anything. It's just by watching. I mean, it's caught more than it's taught. Um, following passions. That's so so, so important. I think that's, oh, we're all given gifts and we're all given talents and we need to, we need to use them, right? <laughs> I think that's important. Um, prioritizing the things we, we love to do. Uh, inputs and outputs. This is, I'm, I'm two more, I'll stop. But the inputs and outputs is huge because every day we have things affecting us and every day we should be affecting others. And so we have to be careful what's coming in because garbage in, garbage out. And none of us would allow our next door neighbor to come dump all their trash cans in our yard, we would be like, hey, what do you think you're doing? But a lot of times we allow 
in, we, we, we invite things in that are du literally dumping trash in our minds all day long. It could be a relationship. It could be, uh, you know, what we're watching on television or on our, on social media, what we're tuning into everything we're tuning into is either making us better people or it's making us worse people. And, you know, I, there's, there's definitely tension relieving, but we have to spend more time on goal achieving or we start to go backwards. And then we start to justify and make excuses and blame other people. You guys have been there, right? We all have been there. So the last thing I'll say is uh, that we all have self-doubt. We all, you know, Jim Rohn would say, if we all have fears. And he says, the key is put, putting fear in the corner. The key is identifying self-doubt and not allowing it to grow into our reality because when we think it it's one thing but if we start speaking it we literally start creating everything that's ever been created was created with thoughts and then turned into words and so use your words to create what you want you might you might have a reality right now that isn't your isn't where you want to be you, you're where where you are right now based off your past experiences your past um you know, challenges and decisions and choices and you've gotten to hear. But what I want to encourage you with today is that you can literally create a new future by taking charge of your thoughts and using your words to not describe where you are now, but to describe where you are headed. And when you use your words and you start to speak that, it starts to speak it into existence because everything in this world, whether it be this Zoom we're on right now was someone's thought and then they spoke it and then they created it. And so as humans made in the, in the image of God, we are creators and we can literally create any future that we want to create. We just have to be aware that self-doubt, we all deal with it. And so we have to push it into a small corner and we have to be aware that it can, if we allow it to, and if we nurture the self-doubt, it'll grow so big that our reality becomes, we're just a worthless turd and we can't do anything. And so instead of wanting to be a worthless turd, I encourage you to want to be something amazing, something great, something you can barely believe for. And as you speak that, and as you believe for that, you'll see your life move in that direction. So uh, Joel, thanks again for bringing these guys on here. I'm just like, man, it's so great to see a guy lived on 18 couches and he owns an NBA team, you know, and he's a, you know, didn't even know anything about planes and said, Hey, let's start a company that deals with jets, planes, whatever. And they did billions in sales. I mean, that's, if that doesn't show you anything's possible, then I just don't know what would. I don't know, but the only thing I'm taking away from this whole thing is don't be a worthless turd. I mean, that, that's my, my power post guys. That, that was awesome, Chad. All right, Tay, go ahead. What, what'd you get taken down tonight? Can't wait to hear what you have. Yeah, this was uh, so good. I mean, I like those little small, just very impactful, like you can remember it. Like, and, and I think for me, many times, those are the anchors that I kind of latch on to because when things happen, you know, it's hard to go back to a, a sermon that you listen to, but you hear that one thing that stuck out to you, you can always go back to that, like uh, Chad said, like those universal truths. So just so much good in it. I think the first thing you said in cinema, Chad said, is get the small wins. Uh, and I love that. And uh, the part that uh, that really stuck out to me when he said, get the small win, he said, flip the momentum in your favor. And I love that because uh, my wife loved, loved puzzles and I got a puzzle for uh, Mother's Day in the box. I, I decided I was going to sit down and do it with her. And I love the picture on the box, but things changed when we took the pieces out of the box and I saw the pieces and I didn't realize it was a jigsaw puzzle, which is a little harder. And I was like, there's no way that we're about to sit down and do this. But what I learned was like, when he said like day by day, piece by piece, like you have to put in the work to get the, the, the picture that you want at the end, like what your goals, like you have to do the little things every single day. And what I learned uh, by doing the puzzle, like I believe everything teaches was like every piece led to us putting something else in that got us closer to the, the, the final picture at the end. So understanding like nothing shows up unless you've done the pre-work. Same thing with this business. Like you can message 100 people and think like, you know, just because 99 said, no, you're not gonna be successful. What that message that 100 did for you was teach you discipline, to teach you to understand like this is a numbers game, to teach you to understand like you have to have these simple systems in place that you must do every single day that's gonna compound at the end. So for me, it just reminded myself like, you don't become successful overnight. You become successful over time. You have to do these things constantly and all the time. 
time in order to get that success and create that momentum and flip it in your favor. So that really stuck out to me. Uh, the second thing he said was similar to what Chad said as well, because I just, like I said, small truth. Uh, he said, don't negotiate your goals. Don't dumb you down. And when he said, when he said, and I love this part, because it's like, man, like just, just, I think sometimes we can be the only thing standard in our way. And many times we blame the circumstances, we blame other people, but it all comes back to our mindset and what we're dealing with within ourselves. He said, when you do that, you create an environment in your head that that's okay. Understanding like when you set a goal, like for me, the beginning of the year, everybody set workout goals. Then February becomes nobody's at the gym. Like you sitting there, like literally, you create an environment in your head already telling yourself like, okay, I'm gonna do this for a month and then I'm gonna quit. So when you decide that you're gonna sign up with this amazing company that you see people having success and you already, with the workout goal, you already created this environment. Okay, I'm gonna message 100 people. My family's gonna tell me no. Everybody in my community is gonna think I'm crazy. What's the first thing you're gonna revert back to? Quitting when you start that new workout plan. You're gonna quit that business as well. So many times you have to stick things out. For me, I tell myself all the time, like at the beginning of the year, don't set a resolution for the year. Set a resolution for that day. Set a resolution for that week. Set a resolution for that month and continue to remind yourself and continue to take steps towards the thing you want. I tell like, literally, you don't fall upstairs. You have to walk upstairs step by step by step by step. There's no way around it. So many times we have to understand like on every path, on every journey, like there's a path that you have to walk. You literally have to put your like put your feet in place and understand like you have to literally take those steps every single day uh, to get there. And the third thing that he said, like so much good, it kind of got me fired up because it's so good. And this one, man, he, he said, believe in the end of your story. Like if that don't like inspire you guys, for me, like that just did everything for me when he said that. And uh, the one thing that I would change that he said, he said, make a contract with yourself. I said, don't make a contract, make a covenant with yourself. People break contracts all the time, but you're not gonna break a covenant. A covenant means this is to the end. I couldn't imagine myself getting on my knee uh, and proposing to my wife and saying, would you be my girlfriend forever? Like I probably would've got slapped and we probably would've broke up that day. Like, no, she wants to be in the covenant, we not a contract. Same thing with yourself, like you're your longest commitment. So you have to make a, a covenant with yourself, understand like, we're gonna see this thing out through the end. Same thing with your goals. For me, I, like, I won't stop until you want to be that person, whatever your goals, whatever you set out for yourself to be, you have to understand, I won't stop until this has been accomplished. And I love uh, the one thing that he said, he also said, uh, if you sign up for it, it's your responsibility to live up to it. And that for me, like that's accountability to a whole nother level. And I think sometimes we have to set these things in place, understanding like when we decide we're gonna do something, it's not gonna be an easy walk to get there. Like that's gonna be obstacles in your way. Uh, and just the last thing that I, I wanted to share that Inky said, and he said, have, have gratitude in advance. And, and I love that for me, I always go back to like being rooted in scripture and having these almost like these anchors of like truth set in place so that when hard times come, like you already have something in place, like I'm gonna get past this, this too shall pass. And mine is Psalms, 9, Psalms 92, 12 through 15. And God talks about like how we're gonna flourish like palm trees. And for me, just to remember, like he was telling us like hard times are gonna come. The hurricane, I live in Florida, we have palm trees outside. We also get rain and hurricanes. Understanding like after this hurricane is passed, that palm tree is still gonna be standing there. So understanding like life is gonna happen. He already gave you a promise, but with that promise, you have to understand the storms of life are still going to blow. But understand that at the end of that storm, you're gonna be stronger, wiser, better off, and more, a, more of a, a firm person in your belief than you were before. So understand like when the storms come, it will pass, but it's also a lesson that you have to get in that storm. So for me, I tell myself all the time that whatever you're going through, if you miss the lesson, then you miss the whole point. Understand, God is always trying to teach you something about yourself so that you can go out and, like he said, share that back with somebody else and teach them on their journey as well. So I think it was just so much good, like like Chad said, like so many universal truths in this that you can take and apply. And me, I believe a lot of it reverts back to the Bible. It just probably worded differently and just kind of taken out of context some of just the, the verbiage to make it kind of stick to us and make it more palatable. But for me, if you take a lot of these things, you can literally trace it back to the Bible and the root because that's why it's, I, I think that's why the truth sticks out so hard to us because it's something that we all believe in and we all know to believe it's true. So just so much good in today. And I think if we go out and really apply, then I think we can get a lot of uh, good lessons out of it.
So good. Yeah. That, that The one thing that he said, you know, obviously when you're feeling overwhelmed, just look for small victories. That's kind of how he started everything. Uh, the next thing after that, that was amazing was the way to flip momentum on is to help someone else. Guys, that's, that's what we talk about with our, our business all the time is making sure that you're looking for that next person to help. Uh, he talked about, you know, the early morning victory. Chad talked about making your bed. If you, if you make your bed first thing in the morning, you are 80% more successful than people who just get up and go. I mean, that's, that's a pretty big difference. Uh, if you dumb down your goals, you're creating a bad habit of lowering your expectations on everything around you, not just your specific goals. Like I said, these are all like PowerPoints. Do you believe in the end of your story? If you're just going about your day and just not recognizing that you have a purpose and you're going for something, you are going to have less impact and less focus than if you actually knew what you were going to and that you believed that it was going to take place. He said, you know, you have to have a non-negotiable list. That way you check those things off and make sure that you're doing them because when they become non-negotiable, it becomes a focused effort towards creating success. He also said, getting into this, did you think it was going to be easy? Whatever you're doing, it doesn't matter whether it's this business, it's a relationship, it's family, it's going out and playing in sports. Did you expect it to be easy? If you signed up for it, you have to live up to it. So at the moment that adversity comes, are you there to handle it? He said the greatest people and the most successful handle the lows and the challenges better than everybody else because they anticipated them. Uh, Tay pointed this one out too. I love this. Have gratitude in advance, an attitude of gratitude before you're going to do things. If you're always having an attitude of gratitude, it draws people to you because people love people who are thankful. I love this. One rule. You're never to anything for your kids. You're never too busy. You're never too tired. You're never too scheduled. You're never to anything for your children. You have to show your kids how to live a good life and not just tell them about it. Uh, gosh, most people grind. Guys, most people grind. Chad grinds, Tay grinds, I grind. All the successful people grind. Everybody knows that you have to work hard at anything, but most people don't want to do it. And that's why most people have what they have. And you look up to the people who have what you want. The people who have what you want are grinding in a way that you aren't. The moment that you decide to get on that grind with them, that's when you start achieving the things that you dream of. I love a happiness meter. Happiness, happiness, happiness. I love that. Uh, I haven't actually listened to that TED Talk, so now I'm going to have to go look it up and, and listen to it because it's amazing. It goes, no matter how successful you are, you need to make sure that your happiness meter is high. Because if not, what is the, the use of being successful? What is, the, what is the use of things if you don't have the happiness to go with? He goes, I know a lot of successful, unhappy people. That's not a way to live life. He goes, most people don't want to fix what is pulling down their happiness meter. Instead, they want to pour on more things that bring it up temporarily. But you have to take a look and see what it is that's actually bringing it down and address that so that you can constantly have a full meter. Are you monitoring and managing your inputs? Guys, that's huge. And, and you're doing a good job because you're here listening to this. I count this as one of your early morning wins is getting on and doing your personal development and leadership development first thing on Tuesday morning. So you're monitoring and managing your input. So today should be an amazing day after you get off here. The three types of regrets, regrets you can fix, regrets you can't fix, and the regrets you can prevent. Guys, I want you to focus on right now the regrets you can prevent. You know, we've got, hopefully, and God willing, years and years and years ahead of us. That means you have years and years and years to proactively prevent regrets. Live a life that's amazing, not a life of regrets. That's one of the things that it, it always scares me to get to the end of life stage and have to look back and go, man, I wish I would have. You know, that, that, that's a powerful statement. He goes, man, if, if you can 
think about going somewhere and doing something, make sure you go and do it because you don't want to get to that point where you can't do it. And then you always wish you would have. He said the two most important things that he thinks that he loves to talk about are one, believing in the end of your story, because most people don't do that. They can't, they can't see three, three days ahead of them, let alone the end of their story and where they want to be. He said, that's why dreaming is so important. And he said, beware of your self-talk. Your self-talk is what creates your reality. He said, so many times people are so negatively programmed on how they talk. They're only reinforcing those negative habits. He said, it doesn't mean just being positive and being optimistic. He says, saying the right things, saying the things causes your brain to start rewiring itself and starts looking for things. Like he said, he was living on uh, what, 18 couches while he was doing startups for his companies. And he kept walking around saying, man, we're millionaires. Uh, can't wait till they pay us like we are because we're doing the work of millionaires. So, so have that mindset. Are you doing the work of a millionaire anticipating that they just have to catch up and pay you? Guys, that's, that's a huge mindset, putting in the work. And, and I'm going to finish and reiterate this one because Tay crushed it with this one. I, I was like, oh man, this is so good. Success is upstairs. You don't fall upstairs, guys. You have to walk upstairs. But more importantly, you can run upstairs. Guys, hope you have an amazing week. Go back, listen to this. If this touched you, make sure that you help and share it with somebody so that they have the ability to go through this and we can take this and change hundreds and thousands of lives, guys. Go out, make it an awesome week. We'll see you here again next time.